Hey everyone, welcome to Lightroom in a Snap. In this episode, I'll be showing you how you can use the Shift key to give you more control over the creation of masks. The steps I'll be showing in this episode are available in both desktop versions of Lightroom, the cloud-based Lightroom app and Lightroom Classic. As always, if you're not familiar with the differences between the two Lightroom apps, I've included a link in the description to my blog post where I cover all the pros and cons of each version and provide some recommendations to help you decide which is the best for you. If you find this tutorial helpful, please be sure to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to make sure you don't miss new videos as they're released. Now that we're here in Lightroom, let's start with the linear gradient mask option. If I just start pulling across the image to create the gradient, it can be difficult to keep it parallel to the edge from where you started. To make a perfectly parallel linear mask, simply hold down the shift key before you start to create the gradient. This will keep it from rotating as you change its size. If you forget to hold down the shift key beforehand, don't worry. As long as you're still holding down the mouse button, you can hold down the shift key afterwards and the mask will snap to parallel based on the angle of the mask. So here you can see it snaps parallel to the right edge, but if I start out with the mask rotated closer to the bottom, it will snap parallel to that edge instead. A similar concept applies to creating radial filters. As you start creating a filter, it's easy to end up with an oval shape as opposed to a perfectly round circle. Often that's just fine, but if you need a perfect circle, simply hold the shift key before you click and drag to create the radial mask. As with the linear mask, if you start creating the radial mask and decide after the fact you want a perfect shape, simply start holding down the shift key and will snap to that perfect circle as long as you're still holding down the mouse button from the original creation point. Now, if you've already created the radial filter and have already let go of the mouse button, you won't be able to make it snap into a perfect circle. You'd have to start over or just eyeball it to get as close to round as possible. But here's the next cool little trick. If you've created an oval radial filter and that's the shape you want, but you just want to make it bigger or smaller without changing its oval shape, as will happen if you just click and drag on one of the tabs, simply hold down the shift key and then start dragging. Doing so will let you resize the radial mask instead of changing its actual shape. Pretty handy. Last but not least is the brush mask. Here you can create a perfectly straight brush mask in two different ways. The first method is to hold down the shift key and then move your cursor along the path you want the straight line. Voila! The other way you can create a perfectly straight brush mask is by simply clicking anywhere in the image to start your brush, then hold down shift and click at the point where you want it to end. Either way you get the same result. But that's not all you can do by using the shift key with a brush mask. Using the second method by clicking into two different parts of the image to create a straight line, I can create a straight line and then, while still holding down shift, create additional lines that are attached to the previous ones. Another handy trick you can take advantage of when using the two-click method to create a straight line between two points, set your brush size for your first point, click on the image, and then change your brush size before clicking for the second point. Just be sure to hold down shift before you make that second click. Now you have a nice straight, but also tapered brush mask. One more quick note. If you enjoy these tutorials and find them helpful, I would be really grateful if you took advantage of the new thanks feature here in YouTube to show your appreciation. Your support will help ensure I can continue to create valuable content like this going forward. And that's Lightroom in a snap. 